Hello and welcome to the flowchart introduction. So the flowchart is used in organic chemistry to talk about and place where reagents are in solution when we're separating things via a separatory funnel. So for this flowchart introduction, we're going to take some theoretical compounds. First is para-bromo-benzoic acid. So notice that we have benzoic acid here, which is a functional group that can act as an acid and will act as an acid, especially in the presence of a base. And the other compound is naphthalene, which naphthalene does not have a functional group, which will act as an acid or a base. So this is referred to as a neutral organic compound. And then we also have ethyl acetate, which is going to be our organic solvent. So for the flow chart, let's start by saying that we've got our para-bromo-benzoic acid and naphthalene and a lot for the flow charts we often have boxes to basically say what compound is where so we'll start with our first box here and then we also need to say that these are dissolved in the solvent ethyl acetate and I can move this here specify that we've got these dissolved in ethyl acetate and now our flow chart can begin so with the flow chart we have these two compounds, parabromobenzoic acid and naphthalene, dissolved in ethyl acetate. So if we want to separate these two compounds from each other, we need to add an aqueous solution, so something not soluble in ethyl acetate, that will separate these two compounds from each other. And for something that will react with our parabromobenzoic acid and make it a water-soluble salt, what we need is a basic solution, so a basic aqueous solution. So for this, um, to type in what we're going to use there, we need something like a 10%, we need something like a 10% sodium hydroxide solution. So we'll just say 10% sodium hydroxide. So now we can say we've added 10% sodium hydroxide, which means what we've done is separate this into two layers. So now we can continue our drawing and say, okay, now we split this into two different layers. So one layer is going to be the organic layer, and the other layer is going to be the aqueous layer. So I'll go ahead and type those two in. So we've got our organic layer, and that is now here and we have our aqueous layer and that is here. So then the question is what is in our organic layer? Well in our organic layer at this point we have the compound that is still soluble in the organic layer. So naphthalene did not interact with sodium hydroxide. We did not make naphthalene water soluble. It's still in our ethyl acetate which is the organic layer. So again, ethyl acetate is the organic layer, and now we have our naphthalene still dissolved in that organic layer. And so if we were going to isolate our naphthalene, what we could do is we could put this on a rotavap. So we could say isolate. a rotavap and what that rotavap would do is evaporate or distill all that organic solvent ethyl acetate and to leave our naphthalene behind. Now the experiment that we did in this that we actually did um, for a liquid liquid extraction experiment we don't have something this convenient. We did not leave a compound in our organic layer. We extracted both into an aqueous layer. Now what's interesting is we could have left the compound in an organic layer and we could have simply isolated that compound using a rotavap to evaporate off our organic layer and leave our organic compound. We just didn't do that. So for the aqueous layer, that's a little bit more complex. For the aqueous layer, for the flow chart specifically, you're asked to draw any salt that forms. And so for this, we still have our aromatic ring that was not impacted by the sodium hydroxide. We still have bromine 
also not impacted by the sodium hydroxide. But what did happen is our carboxylic acid was deprotonated, and now we have a carboxylate anion. So now we have a negative charge there, and we have sodium sitting next to that to stabilize that negative charge. This has formed an ionic bond, not a covalent bond, so we would never draw a line connecting these two. And that ionic bond is a salt that is formed in solution. This salt is more water soluble than our original organic compound here. And this is water soluble, which is why it's in our aqueous layer. That bromine looks pretty bad, so let me redraw that. I should have made my box a little bit smaller here. And we'll just have our bromine sticking outside that box a little bit. All right, so we've got our salt specified that is in our aqueous layer. And now what we need to do after adding our sodium hydroxide to make two layers, once we separate out that aqueous layer, what we're going to do is add something like a 3 molar HCl so that we can protonate our salt. So specifically to look at the mechanism for that, we could use our electrons, take that hydrogen, deprotonate that strong acid, and what we form again is parabromobenzoic acid. So once we form that parabromobenzoic acid, we can just type that back in here because it's not a salt. We don't need to draw it out. So para bromo benzoic acid. That's in this box right here. And for our para bromo benzoic acid, we can isolate via vacuum filtration. And I forgot to check that box, so let me retype para bromo benzoic acid. That's what we formed after we protonated our salt, and then we isolated our organic compound, which was not is not water soluble anymore, so it crashed out of solution. We isolated that via vacuum filtration. So that's how we would specifically have a flow chart to represent what's happening to separate two different organic compounds using an organic solvent, as well as our aqueous solutions and incorporating acid-base reactions.